Welcome to this video. I'm continuing the series in which I'm practicing a bunch of integrals via section 7.5 of the Stuart Calculus Early Transcendental Textbook, the 7th edition. Okay, so we left off on number 17. Let's begin. We have this integral from 0 to pi, t cosine squared t dt. Okay, so here, I know that if it's just t cosine t dt, it's integration by parts to solve the integral. Do I want to use integration by parts to solve this? It might be doable if we let u be t and dv be cosine squared, because we know how to find the integral of cosine squared to get our v. So remember, integration by parts I'll even do on the side. u is t, dv would be cosine squared t dt. So we could get a du easily, that's just dt, and v would be, well, we have to use the half angle identity here. So we could do that, that's not an issue. So it'd be half integral of 1 plus cosine of 2t dt, okay? And then it'll be u v minus v du, okay? So it's actually doable, like this, okay? Um, so actually, let me just do it then, because I actually solved this, this one beforehand, because I wasn't 100% sure, uh, and I did it a little differently. So maybe I'll go over that afterward to show you different ways to approach this, okay? So let's find v here. It's not that hard. We've done it before. It's half times t plus half sine 2t. And then technically there's a plus c, but remember for integration for parts, we can omit it. Um, let me double check. I did this correctly. Get rid of this, get rid of that. Looks fine. Okay. So v is equal to this. Okay. So let's just do integration by parts here. So this would be t times this guy. So let's, let's write it like this. t over 2. t times half. t over 2 times t plus uh, sine of 2t minus integral v du. So it'll be minus half integral of t plus half sine of 2t by dt. And this is a definite integral, so this is from 0 to pi, and this is from 0 to pi. Okay, this is just integration by parts. Okay, and these are simple to integrate, so we got to be careful with our parentheses. Okay, so I'm just going to evaluate everything at the end together. So let me write it like this. t over 2, t plus half sine of 2t. Okay, that's this term. I didn't touch it. Here, minus half, big parentheses, because we might need a few. Um, integral of t is t squared over 2. Integral of this is minus a fourth cosine of 2t. Okay, we're going to evaluate this whole thing from 0 to pi. Okay, so let's do that now. Let's see if I get the same answer as I did before, actually. So we plug in pi first, so we get pi over 2 times pi plus um, sine of 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0, so pi plus 0. Let me write it like that. Minus half times, we get pi squared over 2, cosine of 2 pi is 1, so minus a fourth, okay? And then minus, let me put a bracket, I'm going to do the lower limit now, 0 times whatever that is, is 0, right? So that would go away. Here we get, um, this would be 0, so let me write it like this, minus half times 0 minus 1 fourth. Okay, because cosine of 0 is 1. So we still have a contribution here. Okay, so now let's start simplifying. This is what? Pi squared over 2. Okay, this is, let me distribute the half, minus pi squared over 4 plus a, a. And this is, so this is why our parentheses came in handy. We need to keep track of the sign. This is half, oh, this negative and this negative make a positive, so it'll be a, 
eighth here, right? And then we still have this minus sign. So minus an eighth. So these would cancel. This is four pi squared over four. Actually, no, two pi squared over four, sorry. So we get pi, let me, let me write this, two pi squared over four minus pi squared over four, which is pi squared over four. And that's exactly what I got before. Okay, so this is the answer. Well, it should be the answer. You can, of course, double check. Okay, so how I did it before was actually, instead of doing the half angle identity, or doing the integration by parts up here, I let me. I did it here, right? This is the same half angle identity. And then I distributed, or I pulled this half out because it's just a constant being multiplied. And this, yeah, that's this line. And then I distributed this t to both terms. And this is the classic integration by parts problem, okay, which I did on the side over here. Integral of t is just t squared over 2. All right, and then after simplification, you can pause the video to see the details. I got pi squared over 4 also. So just show two techniques that both worked. Okay, next, number 18. This one's very easy. Okay, hopefully you can see that there's a very obvious substitution. U is square root of t. Du is 1 over 2 root t dt. Okay, so let's worry about our limits of integration afterward. It'll be e to the u. 1 over square root t dt would be 2 du. So 2 du. Very easy integral now. 2 e to u plus c, which is 2 e to the square root t plus c. Done. Oh, this is a definite integral. So, my bad. Um, not quite done yet. So, when t is 1, u is also 1, just so square root of 1. When t is 4, u is square root of 4, which is 2. So, we want to evaluate this from 1 to 2. Sorry for the mess. Um, so, this is 2 times e squared minus e. Done again. Done now, actually. Right? Very easy. Number... 19. This one's not bad either, because I can see the answer right away. Okay, we have this indefinite angle. Okay, so how can we solve this? Can we substitute this guy in itself? x plus e to x, if u is that, u is x plus e to x, du would be 1 plus e to x dx, which I don't see the signature of it here. So maybe not that. If, what if I just plug in the whole thing as u? u is e to the x plus e to the x. du would be this guy times derivative of this guy, which is 1 plus e to x. So again, not there. It complicates things, actually, if we do it like that. So, are we stuck? Well, actually, we can use properties of exponents. So hopefully you remember this. It's the same thing as e to the x, e to the e to the x, dx. Properties of exponents. You can... When we have the same base, and they're being multiplied by each other, you can add the two exponent terms. So that's why I did here. Or the other way around. Okay, so now we let u be e to the x. du would be e to the x dx. Okay, so our integral becomes, this is just e to the u, e to the x dx is just u. So our, our integral is e to u plus c. And when we evaluate it, it goes e to u plus c. So we back substitute after that. And we're done. As simple as that. No need to overthink. Okay, this one is even easier. You don't even, don't overthink this one. Okay, e squared is just a constant. Like pi is a constant. Okay, e is, if you remember, it's like 2.7, 2.7, something like that. Okay, so if it's a constant, how do we evaluate the integral of a constant? e squared times x plus c. Done. All right, let's move on to a harder one now. Sorry. 
pre-solve this one so I know what the answer is. Uh, at least the answer I got. Integral arctan square root x dx. How do we solve this? So I know that if it's just arctan x dx, we use integration by parts there. Okay? So let me try that. Let's see if it actually works. It might not work, and then we might have to try something else. Okay, so let's let u be the whole thing. Arc tan square root x. Because remember, if it's just arc tan of x, we let u be arc tan of x. So let me try the same thing here. Maybe we'll get something somewhere. du would be 1 over 1 plus square root of x squared uh, times the root of the square root of x, which is 1 over 2 root x dx. Okay? dv would be what's left, dx. v is equal to x. Okay? So what happens when we do integration by parts? We get into, oh sorry, uh, uv minus v du. Let's do that first. x arc tan square root x minus integral of this whole gut, this product of these two guys here. So I see that there's a half, so let me pull that out. Um, x over 1 plus x, because square root of x squared is just x, and that's to have another square root of x there. Okay? So even if I simplify this, then it'll just be a square root x on top. How do we evaluate this guy? I'm not quite sure how to, actually. So maybe this is not the right technique then. Okay, so let's abandon this. Let's try something else. Okay, so sometimes if you try one thing on the exam and you see it doesn't go anywhere, immediately try something else. Don't get stuck on trying to evaluate this. Okay, so how about we make a substitution? Because, okay, let's even go down a list. Trigger angle is not like the sine or cosine type or tangent secant. Doesn't look like that. Uh, trig sub, I don't see a something squared plus something squared, so not that. Uh, not partial fraction decomposition because not a rational function here. Okay, so let's try making a substitution of something. So what if we let, let me call it so like p. p is square root of x. Okay, so why would I ever want to do that? Maybe if we substitute it, then it will just be arc tan of just p and not square root of p or something like that. So maybe that will help us out, okay? So as always, we need to find um, dp, but we can actually do it a quicker way or a nicer way. p squared is equal to x. This is the same definition, okay? I just squared both sides. It's the same definition. So if we differentiate here, it's a little nicer. 2p dp is dx, and this is much nicer notation because let's let me differentiate it from here also so let me draw a dotted line there it'll be dp is 1 over 2 root x dx that's okay we can move the 2 root x over here dp is dx square root x is p so 2p dp is dx which is the same thing i got there so this is just a little quicker in my opinion okay so now let's substitute what happens we get arc tangent of p dx is 2p dp. So let me, so 2, let's pull outside, p dp. Okay, so maybe now let's do an integration by parts here. So I use p because I'm going to write a u and dv here now. u would be, still has to be arc tangent because we, if we let dv be the arctan, we need the integral of that, which you need integration by parts to find it, as I was saying. So maybe let's let u be arctan p. du would be 1 over 1 plus p squared dp. dv would be p dp. Actually, let's say, let me do it a little differently because let me say it's 2p dp. So let me move this 2 back in here. 
Why do I want to do that? Well, it becomes a nice P squared afterward, right? So instead of P squared over 2 and leaving this, having this 2 out here, let's directly write this as P squared. Okay. So, we want to do integration by parts, we were saying. So, uv minus v du. Okay, so it'll be p squared arc tan p minus integral of p squared over 1 plus p squared dp. This is actually much nicer now. We can integrate this. Okay, so you can do it multiple ways. You can do long division because this is a rational function. Same degree on the top and bottom. So you can do long division to help simplify things, which I won't cover here. Or we can do a little simple trick. So let me write this portion first. So we can say it's uh, p squared plus 1 minus 1. You can do a little trick like this. Plus 1 minus 1, those will cancel. We get back the same thing, right? Why in the world would I want to do that, though? So, we can break this up into p squared plus 1 over 1 plus p squared minus 1 over 1 plus p squared dp. Okay? This is just 1. This is just, and we integrate, that's the arctan. When we integrate this, that's just p. So, we can finally say, our integral is p squared arc tan p minus parentheses p minus arc tan p plus c. Okay, now we got back substitute. Our p was square root of x. So it becomes x arc tan square root x minus square root of x minus arc and square root x plus c. And that's the answer that I get. Okay, so this just goes to show that even I, when I pre-solved this, I tried this. Didn't quite work, so I tried a different method. Okay, so sometimes just, for harder integrals like this one, this is a little harder, you might try one method, didn't quite work, so you got to backtrack and try a different method. And this one, it clearly made things a lot easier after we made that substitution. Okay, and actually this is already over 17 minutes, almost 18 minutes in, so I'll call it a part here. So hopefully this was helpful, just seeing me approach one way and seeing it didn't work. Going down the side, this will happen for multiple problems coming up, actually. Okay, so anyway, please like this video if you found it helpful. And as always, please also subscribe if you haven't already, and look out for the next video where I'm going to be doing more problems. So I'll see you in that video, hopefully. Bye.